Okay, so let's continue here and hopefully end it off on this part. So this is Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 3. For the practices of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel. So it also tells us in the book of Enoch how the earth has been corrupted by the works of Azazel. Which you can read for yourself to find out that Azazel taught mankind about the works of the metals of the earth. So, let's continue to read. They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammers and nails so it will not totter. Like a scarecrow in a cucumber field, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them. They cannot do any harm, nor can they do any good. So this is what the Most High Yahweh was saying about these uh, idols that people worship today, known as Jesus, Shiva, Buddha, Allah, Habakkuk 2. And uh, let's go ahead and go to verse 19. Woe to him who says to wood, Come to life, or to lifeless stone, Wake up, can it give guidance? It is covered with gold and silver. There is no breath in it. Okay, so this is why the scripture says, Here in Numbers 23 and 19, The Most High is not human, that he should lie. Right? Because why? Well, let's understand this here. Human beings lie. They have trained their mouth to lie, according to the Word of God. This is what the Most High Yahweh says about the other nations, that they do not know His laws. Okay? It says here, Not a human being, that he should change his mind. So, let's understand this here, that uh, the people, right, human beings, they make these idols that cannot save them, right? And then after a while, right? They give these idols new looks. You know? They go ahead and uh, place all these construction things on these idols so that they can make them better, right? They give them a, a remake, a do over. I mean, this is why the Most High Yahweh was not a human being. Or rather, say, not a human being, that he should change his mind. Because, for instance, right, let's say uh original movie came out back then in the 1970s. Well, people want to go ahead and give it a, a remake, right? Because they want to change their mind about things, right? They want to give it a new twist, a new plot. This is, this is what he's talking about, okay? This is what human beings do. So this is what God says that he does not do, okay? You get it? God is not human, that he should lie, right? This is why you have... You know, many different so-called sun gods, right? Because the people have lied. They have basically cast righteousness to the ground. They started worshipping the things in the heavens above. You see that? That's how they lie. By believing in lies. And it says that the Most High Yahweh was not a human being. That he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? This is why the Most High Yahweh says in Deuteronomy 4 and 15, You saw no form of any kind the day Yahweh spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire. Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully, so that you do not become corrupt. You see that? So if you're somebody who's worshipping Jesus Christos, right? Jeebus guys, Shiva Buddha Allah, and you think that you're worshipping the right thing, but the Most High Yahweh is telling you here, though, that you have become corrupt. This is what you have become. You have become corrupt. The sincere servants of the Most High Yahweh, they know who is their God. They know their God has no image, has no form. So it says here, so that you do not become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol, an image of any shape. So it does not matter how many times you say that uh, Jesus, who you call the only begotten Son of God that died for your sins, 
Does not matter how many times you say he's God in the flesh. Does not matter how many times you say that you have to go through him to receive salvation. But God said, do not make for yourself an idol. Okay? An image of any shape. Whether formed like a man or a woman. Okay? Now Jesus, who you call your Savior, your Lord, your God, he is in the form of a man, is he not? Right? And his mama, the Virgin Mary, she's in the form of a woman. Is she not? Right? Well, guess what? Let's understand this here. It's no coincidence that there is an Egyptian worship of uh, Tammuz and Semiramis. Okay? It all goes back to Egyptian worship. So, let's understand this here, right? You people out there that want to continue to believe in lies, you're going to do this to your own harm. Because you're going against God. Let's go ahead and see what, it's, what it says about your Jesus. Because your Jesus is really Azazel. you got to understand this here that Jesus is just a, a form of Satan. Just like uh, Shiva, Buddha, Allah. They are forms of Satan. Isaiah 14 and 12 says, How have you fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn? You have been cast down to the earth. You who once lay low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. So how did uh, Lucifer, Azazel, say in his heart that he will ascend to the heavens? Well, by making many different forms and shapes of gods and goddess and having the people worship, worship them as gods. This is how he has said in his heart that he will ascend to the heavens. He says he will raise his throne above the stars of God. He will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly on the utmost height of Mount Zephon. I will ascend above the tops of the cloud. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Here's the key verse. Those who see you stare at you, they ponder your fate. That's why the Most High Yahweh told Moses to make a bronze serpent and put it up on a pole, right? Because anybody who looked at it, they will live. So pretty much this is what's going on. The people who are waking up from this Jesus Christos Jeebus guy spell, they're staring at this thing called Jesus, this thing called Yeshua, this thing called Idushai. They're staring at it and they're and they're pondering its fate. Right? Because the most tell you how it says how Azazel was gonna be sacrificed, did he not? So those who see you stare at you, they ponder your fate. Is this the man? who shook the earth and made kingdoms tremble, right? Because people say that uh, who they call Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, they say that that's God in the flesh, right? They say that, uh, you know, God walked, walked the earth 2,000 years ago and how he's going to come back to do it again. So this is why the Most High Yahweh is asking, you know, he's asking you, right? You who believe in this thing called Jesus, is this the man who shook the earth and made kingdoms tremble? Because why? Because Yahweh was the one who does that. Let's go ahead and show you that. In Isaiah 42 and 14. It's called a new song of praise. This is why the Most High Yahweh says that this covenant that he's making with his people, it would not be like the one that he made with your ancestors in Egypt. It says here, this is the new song of praise. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetations. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. Okay? So. You know, you people out there that want to continue to worship in these idols, right? Can your idols do this for you? This is why it says here, the next verse. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, right? Again, does not your Jesus have an image? Does not your Santa Maria, Virgin Mary, has an image? So it says, but those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are my God, will be turned back in utter shame. Okay? These are the days that we are living in. So let's go ahead and uh, show you that the Most High Yahweh, 
he basically tells you that you know you're not supposed to uh, be worshiping the things that these other nations around us are worshiping you're not supposed to be fearing what they fear Jeremiah 31 and 31 the days are coming declares Yahweh when I will make a new covenant with the people of Yasharel which is talking about the northern house the Native American the Hispanics and with the people of Yahweh which is talking about the southern house the so-called African Americans right the Levites the Benjamites this is what it's talking about the people who got scattered in Assyria and Egypt that's why the Most High Yahweh was making a highway for the Assyrians, the Egyptians, and the Yasharalites. Okay? So this is what it means when I will make a new covenant with the people of Yasharal and with the people of Yahweh. It says here, It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. Why? Because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares Yahweh. And verse 33 says, This is the covenant I will make with the people of Yasharal after that time, declares Yahweh. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Verse 34, No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, No, Yahweh, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares Yahweh. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Who? Yahweh. Okay? Not some entity called Jesus. Alright? Or Idushai. Or whatever you want to name your so-called Hamashiach. Because he's not anointed. Okay? Those who the Most High Yahweh has put his spirit on. Those that he put his words in. They are anointed. Okay? This is why it says this here. I'll go ahead and show you that. This is why Yahweh says, He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. <laughs> Yahweh Almighty is his name. Okay, get it right. Yahweh Almighty. Nothing else. This is why it says in Jeremiah 7 and 21. This is what Yahweh Almighty, the God of Yahshua says. Go ahead. Add your burnt offerings to your other sacrifices and eat the meat yourselves. Why? Because these people eat at the mountain shrines. Which, you know, most high willing, we'll talk about that if we have some time. So it says here, For when I brought your ancestors out of Egypt and spoke to them, I did not just give them commands about burnt offerings and sacrifices. But I gave them this command, Obey me, and I will be your God and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all I command you, that it may go well with you. Just like it says here, in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 14, but suppose this son has a son who sees all the sins his father commits, and though he sees them, he does not do such things. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look to the idols of Yasharal. He does not defile his neighbor's wife he does not oppress anyone or require a pledge for loan. He does not commit robbery but gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He withholds his hand from mistreating the poor and takes no interest or profit from them. He keeps my laws. See that? He keeps my laws and follows my decrees. He does not die for his father's sin. He will surely live but his father will die for his own sin because he practiced extortion robbed his brother and did what was wrong among his people like it says here about those who are complacent and desire one look what it says here you drink wine by the bowful you see that they eat at the mountain shrines right they eat meat with the blood still in it they guzzle down this wine of Babylon. You drink wine by the bowful and use the finest lotions, but you do not grieve over the ruin of Joseph. Which we will talk about the ruin of Joseph. Zechariah 12 and 8. On that day, Yahweh will shield those who live in Yahweh Washalom. 
so that the feeblest among them will be like David, and the house of David will be like the Most High, like the angel of Yahweh going before them. Which is talking about his righteous right hand, Michael, the great prince who protects your people. All right, that cloud by day. This is what it's talking about. It says here, on that day, I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Yerushalayim, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Yerushalayim a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. You see that? For all of you people out there that want to exclude the Native Americans and the Hispanics as being Yasharalites, as being Hebrew, you people who do not acknowledge your brother, this is talking about you. You drink wine by the bowful and use the finest lotions, right? Oh, you know who you are, right? Your skin is very healthy, right? You are Yasharalite by blood. You from the tribe of Yahawada. You drink wine by the bowful and use the finest lotions. You're not Ashley Larry no more, right? But check this out. You do not grieve over the ruin of Joseph. Okay? So, again, the Most High Yahweh. He says, I'm sorry, let's go ahead and uh, read this again. In Zechariah 12 and 10. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. Now let's read Exodus 4 and 22. Then say to Pharaoh, this is what Yahweh says, Yasharal is my firstborn son. Okay? Again, precept upon precept, this is how we get the understanding. And this is why it says this here in Isaiah 14 and 1. Yahweh will have compassion on Jacob. Once again, he will choose Yasharal. Why? Because uh, they were made a ruin. Okay? So this is why it says, Once again, he will choose Yasharal and will settle them in their own land. Foreigners will join them and unite with the descendants of Jacob. Just like we read. In Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, which the Most High Yahweh says that he will make a covenant with the people of Yasharal after that time, declares Yahweh, and he will put their laws, he will, sorry, he will put his laws in their minds and write it on their hearts. So this is the reason why the Most, the most High Yahweh says that, you know, we are not supposed to despise the foreigner who resides among us, those who are willing to, you know, understand the true ways of the Most High, they can. They can because in these times and in these days, there's going to be great distress on the earth. There's going to be a lot of calamities and disasters upon the earth for those who do not want to acknowledge their God. Those who want to continue to walk proud and arrogant. Look what it says here. Isaiah 26 and 21. Well, let's start off at verse 20. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. And where is that? Well... That's in the name of the Most High. That's how we're able to hide ourselves. Proverbs 18 and 10. Again, the name of the Most High Yahweh is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. So this is what it's talking about. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. See, Yahweh is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins the earth will disclose the blood shed on it the earth will conceal its slain no longer now let's read Zechariah 9 and 12 return to your fortress which once again is the name of Yahweh you prisoners of hope even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you I will bend Yahweh as I bent my bow and fill it with a poem. I will rouse your sons to Zion against your sons, Greece, and make you like a warrior's sword. Okay? So, you know, quickly before this part of the video ends, I just wanted to go ahead and say how you can find for yourself on the internet an uh, old Native American map, and it shows you how this land here, which is, you know, called America, 
specifically the New York part, it was originally called Culture Lost.